This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Here at the Horseshoe Ranch, we live in an area rich in history. For thousands of years, the Yosemite Mountains have abounded with the cultural life of the Indians, particularly the Mono, the Miwok, and Chickchansee. Historians have dated their artifacts back to over 4,000 years ago. Woven baskets, pelts of fur garments, fishing spears, arrowheads, axe heads, rock paintings, beadwork and many other specimens all abound in the region. Many places in this country were campgrounds, and thousands of chips of the shiny black volcanic glass obsidian are to be found where Indian men would fashion their arrowheads and tools by chipping away at the stone with a piece of deer antler. Just to the south of here, only a couple of minutes' walk from this broadcasting studio, across a meadow of oak and grasses and wildflowers, there are gray granite rocks and boulders in the ground covered with Indian grind holes made by many years of grinding corn and acorns with pestles or heavy stones held in the hand. The Indian women would spend hours every day sitting or squatting at their grinding stones making flour and paste from seeds and nuts for simple breads, pastries, and nutritious sauces for soups and stews supplemented by the meat of wild game. And in one of those old holes, we found the pestle, or grinding stone, still there, in its grind hole nearly 12 inches deep. An expert in Indian anthropology told me that signified that the last person to use that grind hole must have been considered a very important person, or even a holy woman, to have had her grindstone left there in the rock, for such was the Indian custom. Near sunset one afternoon, I found a couple of acorns from the surrounding trees, cracked them, and put the nut meats in the grind hole, and with that old pestle began to crush the acorns into flour, just as the Indians had for thousands of years, and of course it all still worked. But I felt a strange sense of history and continuity with my forebears on this land. For thousands of years before me, there I was, a white man, using the same elementary tools the Indians had used, a handheld rock and a granite grindstone, making a wonderful, nutritious nut flour in exactly the same way that the earlier Indians had, and it all still worked. These same simple tools and ingredients still worked after thousands of years. And then, suddenly, it swept across me, so exactly with the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, so with the teachings of Jesus. They still work 2,000 years later. They're so simple, so basic, so elementary. They've been used for centuries. They worked 1,500 years ago, and they still work now today. Forgive and show mercy. Overcome evil with good. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Pray for forgiveness of your trespasses as you forgive those who trespass against you. Seek for the will of God. Apply the golden rule. Love God and love others. Such simple and fundamental truths as these have worked through the centuries, and they still work today. And as you attempt in your own life to follow these great spiritual admonitions, may you feel in your heart and soul a spiritual kinship through the thousands of years with all the other men and women and young people who have ever attempted to use these mighty teachings of the spiritual life and these secrets to the living of life eternal. These old tools still yet work today. You can use them. And the greatest human beings who have ever lived upon this earth have endeavored to utilize these principles and teachings in their lives. They still work. What this carpenter of Nazareth taught 2,000 years ago is still relevant and immediately applicable to your life this very moment. God is your Father, he taught. His most famous prayer began, Our Father who art in heaven. That old prayer is still valid. It still works. God is not just our cosmic equation or our universe architect. He is our Father. You are a son or daughter of this living God. And that ancient dream still lives, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, of all this world living as one planetary family of God. It is still relevant. It will one day change this world, and it can change your life beginning here and now, if you will have it so by faith. The teachings of Christ shall never die. Through 2,000 years of human history, this Jesus of Nazareth has stood the test of time. He was so controversial in his own day that he was reviled, ridiculed, and then put to death in the most cruel and physically painful fashion that the human mind has ever conceived, crucifixion. 
And what crime did he commit to deserve such a ghastly and violent end? He taught truth, the truth about God and the meaning of life, death, and the universe. He came not to overthrow the religion of his forefathers, but to fulfill it. He was what he taught. He was a living, breathing, audiovisual demonstration of all that of which he spoke. He loved people. The sickness or affliction of a passing man or woman or child evoked his immediate concern. He loved everybody, from Mary Magdalene, a prostitute, to Matthew and Zacchaeus, the hated tax collectors, to Simon, the political agitator. His healing touch restored sight to the blind and made lame men walk. His ringing and resonant voice called Lazarus from the grave and called multitudes from their living tombs of spiritual despair into the clean sunlight of godly love and joy. He drove the sacrificial animals out of the temple and rousted religious hypocrites from their wicked ways. He turned water into wine and turned the world upside down. He fed the multitudes with loaves and fishes and nourished the starving souls of all he met with the bread of life. A sick woman reached out and touched the hem of his garment and was instantly made whole. He returned to his hometown of Nazareth to preach in the synagogue there. And the townspeople were outraged and irate at him and tried to throw him over a cliff. All this for proclaiming the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man to this fitful, fighting world. He came proclaiming what humanity needed most, the love of God and the love of others. And he was repeatedly attacked for doing it. He did more good for this world than any man who has ever lived but was executed for what he did. He walked the dusty roads of Palestine and ministered faith and hope and love. To everyone he encountered, he gave faith to the despairing, hope to the hopeless, love to the unloved, and good cheer to the downtrodden. He was so full of godliness that he convinced skeptics and doubters of the realities of which he spoke. He not only taught the truth, he lived it. He was what he said. He walked what he talked. He was filled with powerful, effusive love, even for his enemies. He said, bless those who curse you, pray for those who despitefully use you, and he did it. He said to overcome evil with good, and he did it himself. He taught forgiveness, and he practiced what he taught. He forgave even those who put him to his death. He told the story of the Good Samaritan who took care of the man beaten and bleeding at the side of the road, and he said, go and do likewise. He told of the prodigal son who wandered off into a far country and spent all his money and finally wanted to return to his father's house, and when he did, was greeted as a long-lost child and welcomed to a banquet in his honor. And he said the love of God for humanity is exactly like that, giving and forgiving, compassionate and open-hearted. He declared that the kingdom of God is within you and that the spiritual things are the most important things in human life. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world, he said, but lose his own soul? He said to sow the seed of truth far and wide, and that which finds good soil will sprout up into life. He told the woman at the well about the living waters springing up into everlasting life, and that the grave is not the end of everything, but only a beginning of life eternal. And he said that those who heed his words will never taste death, not permanent death, but only a gateway to life everlasting. He said when someone smites you on one cheek, turn the other. Forgive not only once, but seventy times seven. Be good and cheerful and pray, not as a public display of religiosity, but as the soul's secret language coming before the Heavenly Father. He walked the dusty roads and fields of the Holy Land and made it holier with every step he took. He lived and breathed the love of God and man. He was everything he talked about. He revealed more of God in his brief life than any other person in human history. He was born 2,000 years ago, but his truth will march on forever. He is the shadow of a mighty rock across a weary land, the fairest among 10,000, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is Jesus of Nazareth, the living Son of the living God, and he came proclaiming freedom to the captives, healing to the nations, and the gospel, the good news of the fatherhood of God. God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And you yourself, in this very instant, can find and come to know the God of whom Jesus spoke 2,000 years ago. For free literature on the spiritual life, 
on the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago and how those teachings can yet transform your life right here and now today. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God and the Brotherhood of Man, which encapsulate or summarize the fundamental teachings of Jesus. Just write, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write for this free literature on the spiritual life. And for those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. That's Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you.